Hi there, and welcome to Basically Longarm Quilting, featuring the Innova Autopilot Mach 3. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at Edge to Edge, and how easy it is to use the software to complete your quilts. Let's get started! So I've just opened up Autopilot, and the first thing that you're going to see when you're connected to your machine is that Autopilot wants you to create a sew zone. And what a sew zone is, is you're basically giving it the uh, overall dimensions of your actual sewing area so it doesn't stitch outside of them and it doesn't hit any of your bars that way, um, which is really convenient. So what it's asking me to do is it wants me to click accept on my lightning stitch screen and when I'm at the right rear corner of my sew zone. So I'm gonna go over to my machine head and I'm gonna take it to the back right hand corner of my sew zone and I like to go off of the quilt top and go onto the backing and I'm going to go to that right rear corner and I'm going to tap accept on my screen. Once I tap on accept it wants me to do the lower left corner or the front left corner as its verbiage says. So I'm going to take my machine all the way to the front left again off the quilt top onto the backing and I'll tap accept on the screen once I've done that. The next thing that I need to do is give Autopilot my quilt size. So over on my screen, I can go to the top and go into settings. And I'm going to come down towards the bottom and go to quilt size. And I'm going to give it a width and a height or a length, depending on how you want to look at that. So my width of this quilt is going to be 36.5. I'll click OK. And the height of my quilt is going to be 40 and I'll click OK. I'll click on accept and that's going to be what my overall quilt will be for this edge to edge. The last thing I need to do when the setup process comes to this part is basically tell Autopilot exactly where an upper corner is. I like to do the upper left because it's just easier to find um, and it's closer to my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my reposition icon. I'll click on reposition. I'll have my method of align to quilt selected and I'm going to go with my mouse and left click on the upper left corner of my quilt grid right here. So I'm going to left click right there and I'm going to walk over to my machine and I'm going to set my machine at that same upper left point on my quilt. I'll go back over to my computer once that's set. And this, is, this gives you a great representation of why you need to align before you start. You can see that my machine is a little off of what the grid is coming to. So once I have my machine set at that point, I'm going to click on Apply. And now it has moved my crosshair in alignment with the actual top left of my quilt. Once I'm done with that, I can click on Done. And now we get to start the fun stuff. So with this edge to edge, I want to start off by finding what pattern I'm going to use. So I'm going to come over here uh, to my pattern library. I'll click on this and I'm going to search for the pattern that I'd like to use today. Um, in this instance, I want to use a pattern by Linda Taylor. It's called Dandelion. And I can type in just the beginning of the word, press enter on my keyboard and it'll pull up what I have available. And this is the pattern I want to use. So I'm going to double left click on my pattern and it's going to bring it over here onto my pattern pad. If I close, out of my pattern library, you'll see that my pattern pad is here with the pattern that I've added to it. So I can left click and hold and drag and drop this pattern over and that pattern is just going to populate onto the screen. I'm going to set it in relation to that upper left corner as well and I get to determine the density of the quilting that I'd like to be at this point. So I have this pattern set at the upper left. I can go over to my machine head and I can just move it and I'm following on the screen along with on the machine and I can move it around the quilt and once I get it kind of in alignment you'll see that I have my crosshairs there and then you get to determine back and forth between the actual quilt I've got about this amount of space right here where all that quilting would go and that's going to give me an idea is that going to be too dense in that section do I want to open it up a little bit more uh, this is all personal preference on how you're wanting to do it. So you can move your machine all around your quilt just to get what one repeat's density is going to be on the quilt. So let's head back over to the computer. 
And what I'm going to do is that's a little too dense for me. So I can just grab my right uh, bottom right square here and I'm just going to drag, click and drag until I get a good size that I want on density. I can say eh, maybe right about there, give or take. We'll take the machine back over, move that down to the bottom right just to get an idea. And looking at that, I'm much happier with the amount of quilting that's going to be in that space because that pattern is already so dense. So you can definitely make those adjustments um, as you go. You'd like to start that beforehand uh, just to get a good idea. You also have your pattern width and height over here on the right hand side. If you know you want an exact height for that pattern, you can go ahead and enter that in here. Now that I have the pattern's density uh, created, what I'm going to do is go up and click on my edge to edge icon. And on the right hand side of the screen in your setup screen, you have types of edge to edge. And I recommend that you play with all of these so you get a good understanding on how they work. Today we're going to be looking at trim with clip connect on. Reason being is most edge to edge patterns um, have kind of ins and outs of them as you can see on the screen. There's a little bit of open gap up here at the upper left and kind of down here. What Trim with Clip Connect does is once I generate this edge to edge, if you'll watch, um, we'll get there in just a second, but once I generate this edge to edge, it's going to kind of shift this pattern over and fill up these gaps for me naturally and do continuous stitching in the binding area to um, keep it uh, sewing continuously. You also have down here towards the bottom a variance. Uh, I like to set my variance at two. What that's going to do is extend the pattern out two inches off of your quilt uh, just to take into effect any uh, movement that you have in the quilt. However, we are going to trim that um, after it's done so we can follow along with what the quilt is actually doing because we don't want to stitch that far off of the quilt top. So I can come down here and click on generate edge to edge and that's going to populate and you can see it's already shifted those patterns over a little bit to take in for that gap. Um, also, you'll see that you have some distance between your rows here, some row gap. If you have that happen with your patterns, you can left click on your row, just the one that's in front of you right here, and drag it up and place it exactly where you'd like it to be. And once you drop it there, Autopilot will redo the math for you um, to take care of that all the way through to keep it nice and equidistant between your rows. Once you're happy with this, you can click on Accept. And now what we can do is trim off any excess. You can see with Clip Connect, it has these lines of continuous stitching up here to keep it going. But like we talked about earlier, we don't necessarily want to quilt that two inches off. We just kind of want to follow what the quilt is naturally doing. So what I can do is come up to my trim tool. And I've got trim as a selected option. I want to do an input of my sew head. So I'm following on, along with what's going on on the quilt. And I want to do a section of quilting at a time. You really only want to trim what's in your quilting space because if you trim your entire quilt for this instance and it has a little bit of wave at the bottom, um, then you're going to have to kind of rework how this pattern is because you've already trimmed it away. So work at a section at a time. Uh, that way you don't get yourself into a pickle. Um, and I'm doing a vertical trim setting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on this first row that we're working on. And once you click on the row or select it, you'll see orange and this kind of hunter green appear. What is orange is what's going to be trimmed away after you hit the accept button. So if I head over to my machine, I can place it about midway down my quilting area. Kind of gives you the best um, success there. About midway down in the binding area. And if I come back over to my computer, and I look on the screen, everything to the right would be trimmed away right now if I hit accept. But I want to trim away what's here on this left hand side. So I'm going to come right here underneath my vertical angle and I'm going to click on invert. And what that's going to do is flip those colors and place the orange now on the left hand side, what it's going to get rid of. So I want that to disappear, so I'm going to click on accept. Now I have stuff to do at the top of the quilt. So I want to go ahead and change my line type or my trim setting type to a horizontal line. Everything above my horizontal crosshair right here is going to be trimmed away because that's currently orange. So we'll go ahead and take our machine head to the middle of the quilt. 
again in the binding area for your best success. You'll head back over to your computer. And now you'll see anything above that line is orange. That's going to disappear, which is what we want. So we're going to click on accept. And then one more time, we're going to do one on the right hand side. So I'll change it back to vertical. And I'll take my machine head to the right hand side binding area. Again, midway down, binding area, back to my computer screen. And just these little segments here on the right side here, because that's orange, will go away. So I'll click on Accept. Once I am done with that, I can come back to my Transform tool. You'll see me use the Transform tool a lot throughout the series. This is kind of like home. That's kind of where you're going back to to get around and move things. So you always kind of go back home to your little stretchy man icon. Now this next row underneath the row we've just played with is beneath your sew zone. We have kind of that gray sew zone that we originally drew out. That's beneath your sew zone, so that's not going to stitch. So there's no need to trim those sides just yet. Uh, keep that into account. You'll just you'll take on that later once you roll the quilt. Last thing that we need to do before we can start stitching is save our project. So I'm going to go to File, Save Project As. And I can give this whatever name I'd like to. Um, I'll do BLQ and then E to E. It looks like I've done another one of those, so I'll just put two and hit save. Once I've saved that project, I'm going to click on go. After you click on go, you'll be um, given a message uh, for you to click continue. So I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. The machine's going to move to its starting position. Once the machine moves to that starting position, let me take you back to the screen real quick uh, before we get stitching. Back on the screen, you'll see that you have a preview of what's going to be stitched. That's your indication to go ahead and take a single stitch to pull up your bobbin thread. So we'll go over to our machine, take a single stitch, pull up our bobbin thread. Uh, best way to do that, if you grab your top thread that you have, grab both hands, and kind of grab it in alignment right here. So left hand holding one piece, right hand holding another piece, and you can just swoop underneath the foot, and that'll easily pull up your bobbin thread as well. You're gonna hold these threads nice and taut and press continue on your screen. Your machine's gonna take some tie-off stitches, and then it's gonna start stitching away. Now while this is stitching, if we look over at our computer screen, at the bottom, you have a pattern progress bar, which is really cool. You can kind of see the progress um, that your uh, row is taking. You also have a speed slider. So if you want to speed up your machine, if you're doing something really loose and open like a meander, you could speed that bad boy up to get it through its path. Or if you're doing something with, you know, small quarter inch pearls or something a little bit more delicate, you can slow it down for it to take more time on what it's doing. Um, you'll also see on the screen here, it is showing you exactly the path that it's following, turning the pattern red, kind of simulating stitches, which is kind of cool. Um, and then the green is what is going to be stitched. And if we look back on the quilt right now, while this is stitching, you'll see that that trim is taking effect with Click Connect on right here at the top, just kind of doing those continuous stitches and then coming back in that binding area just like so. Alrighty, so we're rolling up here to um, its final stitches. So once it's done, um, you're going to pull some thread right here, just to make it a little easier. We're going to push the machine away, grab our top thread that's sitting on the quilt top, take the machine back to where it stopped, take a single stitch, push our machine back away, and then you'll have your bobbin thread come up so you can trim that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those threads. Once I've cut those threads, I can tap OK on my screen. And then I'm going to take my clamps off and roll up the quilt. 
One thing worth noting before rolling up your quilt is if you're using a pattern that required any nesting, especially one that has deep nesting like this one where it comes and kind of arcs in, you want to kind of have your machine in place to remember that. So I like to put my machine again in the center of the quilt. I like to go all the way back and then come up just a little bit. What that's going to do is kind of give me a stopping point for my roll. So when I'm rolling, I can see how deeply nested this is. And I know to make sure to stop with the foot right there or a little before it to make sure that the machine doesn't go too far into the previous quilting. So I have our quilt rolled up and we're going to go ahead and base down our sides. And I want to take you through that um, option real quick. So what we're going to do is I want to come to my screen and I want to tap on my home icon, which is that top left button. And if I tap on that, it's going to take me into my regulated stitching properties. And you have a couple of different options in here. The second one in the middle, depending on how you have it set, is normally a four stitches per inch, which is a good basting. So I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to come onto my quilt. And I want to kind of meet up where I finished the last basting process. So I'm going to take a single stitch. Again, pull up our thread the exact same way, swooping under the foot. And then I'm going to take a couple single stitches to lock it down. And I kind of want to keep my quilt riding on the side of the foot to give me a good distance and to know it's rolling straight. Uh, another thing before we start, keep your hand behind the foot and apply a little bit of pressure to the quilt and push towards the back. What we have here with our foot is you have a hopper foot, but also a presser foot. So as it's stitching, it's, and you're pulling it with this basting, it's pushing on that fabric and ever so slightly pushing it towards whatever direction you're going. So if you hold it behind it, you're counteracting that and keeping your quilt from having a frown at the bottom as opposed to being nice and straight. So a couple single stitches to lock it down. I'll press on my start button or my right handle button. And I'm just going to pull this towards me, keeping that quilt nice and straight. Hand behind the foot. Once I get down to my bottom, I didn't have much really far to go on this one. I'll press my right handle button to stop. Take a few single stitches to tie off. I'll push away. Grab my thread. Push away again. Pull up my bobbin thread and then I can trim what's away. Once you do this on both sides, you'll come back to your screen. And on your screen, you'll want to make sure you go back to whatever regulated stitching you were using because this is what controls the stitches per inch in your autopilot. So we were back down here at the bottom one doing 12 stitches per inch, but just make sure you go back to that uh, before you jump back into your M3 or your Mach 3 screen uh, to continue your computerized quilting. Alrighty, so now that you have your sides basted and your clamps on, what we're going to do is tell Autopilot where our quilt is now. It does not know that we've rolled the quilt until we tell it that we have. So what I'm going to do is I want to be able to find a point on my screen that I can also find on my quilt. Once I found that point I want to work with, like for instance, I'm going to work with this one right here. I'm going to come to my reposition tool. I'm going to have a line to quilt selected as my method, and I'm going to left click, you can even zoom in, left click on the point that you want to use. So I'm going to use this point right here. I can zoom out now just to give myself a visual, and I'm going to take my machine to that same point on the quilt that I've selected. And um, if it's a little further back, you can also turn on your laser light. So from your main M3 screen, you can turn on your laser light so you have a nice um, point uh, right down to it. So I can move my machine right to that point. Once it's set there, I can head back over to my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. And now, as you can see, it has moved my crosshair down to match that point that I've clicked uh, with the one that I've got selected. Once I'm done with that, I can click on done. And now we need to trim off our sides. Now we only have to do our left and our right this time. So I'm going to go ahead and select the row that we're working on. I'm going to open up my tools. Now this is something that you'll notice. Sometimes your tools like to come and hide over here to give you more viewing screen on your viewport right here. So you just click on the tools and that will open them all the way back up so you have all your options again. I'll come to my trim, my scissors icon, and I'm going to move my machine over to the left hand side in the binding area. 
once again, kind of midway down. Now on our screen, you can see again that it's showing all the way to the right is nothing but orange. And uh, that's, not what st that's not the stuff we want to get rid of. So I want to go ahead and click on invert and accept that. Now I need to do my right hand side. So staying in that same tool, move my machine over to the right, binding area. Once I set it there, come back over to my screen. I'll have to do another invert, invert. Stuff on the right is going to go away because it's orange. I'll click on accept. I'll click on my little stretchy man, my home icon, transform. Takes me back to where I was. I'm going to save my project, file, save project, click on go. It's letting me know again that we have some patterns outside of our sew zone. It's going to DQ them. We're okay with that. So I'm going to say yes. Once I say yes to that message, it's going to give me an option to click continue. I'll go ahead and do that to start the process. Machine is going to move automatically to its starting location. Once it gets to its starting location, you'll see your preview on the screen of what it's going to stitch. Again, that's just letting you know you need to go ahead and take a single stitch to pull up your thread. Once you've done that, you can hold your bobbin and top thread nice and taut. Press continue on your screen. It'll take single stitches and then you'll let it stitch away. Alrighty, so we're coming up here to the last final parts of this dandelion pattern. Machine's gonna come in, finish this last piece and tie off. What we're gonna do, remember, is grab some thread, push back, grab that thread now from the quilt top. Come back, take a single stitch where it stopped, push away. Our bobbin thread will then pop up and we will trim that excess away. What I want you to do now is we're gonna take off our clamps, roll up the quilt, base down both sides, and I'll meet you back so we can do a reposition. Okay, so I've got that quilt rolled up, um, base and clamps on the side. I want to give you another tip on repositioning. Uh, when we first did our first roll, uh, we selected the point first and then we went and put our machine on the point. There is another way you can do it as well that might help you a little bit easier, especially if you have a lot of points in the quilt. So go ahead and put your machine on a physical point that you want to work with. Um, I like to stay in the middle, kind of helps uh, see if there's any shrinkage, helps alleviate a few things like that. So go ahead and put your machine on a point and then head over to your computer screen. And if the quilt is rolling straight or as straight as it can, if we follow our vertical crosshair all the way down, you'll see that it gets really close, if not hits that point that you're working on at the very bottom. Um, so it's easier for you to, for you to find that point. Um, so what you can do is go ahead and click on your reposition icon. We're going to do align to quilt. I'm going to move the machine just a hair so you can see the point. Um, I'm going to click on this point with my mouse and then make sure I put my machine back on it on the quilt since I moved it a little bit. Um, once it's where it needs to be, go ahead and click on apply. You'll see your crosshair move down to match that point. We'll click on done. And then let's do um, our trims on the side. So open up our tools, come to our scissors, select the row that we're working on, which is this one right here. Move our machine over into the, on this side, the left side, the binding area. Come onto our screen, make sure we do that invert because we're getting rid of what's in orange. Click accept, move our machine to the right hand side basting area binding area, excuse me, and uh, do an invert on that one so we can get rid of what's in orange on the right. 
click accept, go back to your little home, your transform icon, do a save, and go ahead and click on go. We'll click continue. The machine will move to its starting position. Once you see that picture of what it's gonna stitch for you, go ahead and take a single stitch and pull up your bobbin thread like normal. Once you've got that bobbin thread pulled up, you can go ahead and click continue. And we're on our way to our next pass. All right, coming into this final uh, leaf on this pattern. And then we'll do a little bit of a roll on this. We don't have much left to do on this part of the series. And um, then I'll meet you back. So let's go ahead, let it do its tie offs. Once again, pull some thread, push the machine away, grab the thread, come back and take a single stitch, push it away and trim your bobbin thread. We'll trim this away. We'll take off our clamps, continue to baste. Once you get to the bottom like we are here, make sure you baste across your bottom, and then I'll meet you back for our final reposition on this one. Alrighty, so we've got rolled up and basted down and clamps on. I'm gonna go ahead and find my point that I want to do reposition off of. So we're gonna go with this one right here in the middle. I'm gonna set my machine there. I'm gonna head over to my computer screen. And this was just a, sh a short roll, so it shouldn't be that far off, but we've got to follow our line down. There's the point that we chose, so we'll click on reposition. We'll click on our point. Machine is there, we've clicked. Let's click on apply. It's gonna set our crosshair there. I'll click on done, zoom out, and now we have a little bit of trimming that we need to do. Now that we're at the bottom, we have to do the bottom, left and right. Not necessarily in that order, but those three. So we'll open up our tools, come into trim, select the row that we're working on. We'll go ahead and do our verticals first. So bring our machine over in the left side binding area. Do an invert and accept. We'll go ahead and change our line to horizontal since we have to do the bottom. So we'll do horizontal. Bring our machine to about the center of the quilt binding area and do another invert so it does what's underneath it. Invert, accept, and then we'll do another vertical line. Take our machine over to the right side basting area. Uh, once again, another invert and accept. Once we have that done, we can click on our transform icon. We will save our project for one last time on this guy, and then we'll hit go. We'll click continue. The machine will move to its starting position. Once you see that picture of what it's gonna stitch for you, go ahead and take a single stitch and pull up your bobbin thread like normal. Once you've got that bobbin thread pulled up, you can go ahead and click continue. Coming over here to the last little part of our pattern. It's gonna come down to its little clip connect line, little dot for the top part of the leaf. It'll tie off. And then for our last part in this edge to edge, we're gonna push that machine away, grab a little bit of thread, grab that top thread, take a single stitch, push it away again. You'll see your bobbin thread, grab your scissors and trim everything away. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning a little bit more about how the edge-to-edge -edge process works on the autopilot. I'll see you next time on Basically Long Arm Quilting. <laughs>